Hello photography fans. Today we're going to be working on some cyan types. Again, yes, but today what we're going to be doing is photograms. So I went on to my garden and I got some of these um, random twigs and leaves and some uh, grass seeds, I guess, or flowers, whatever, whatever these things are. Pretty cool looking. So I just synthesized the uh, three sheets of paper. I'm gonna do probably two more after that, and I'm waiting for them to dry. So what we're gonna do is um, place these um, objects on the synthesized paper and expose it to UV light. So whatever is around the object it will get exposed. It will turn blue. Whatever's underneath it will stay relatively white, the base color of the paper. So. Uh, you can arrange these things in, in, in many different ways, whatever whatever your fancy is. And then you expose it and you squeeze it between paper and uh, between the glass and, and whatever other substrate you use. I use this homemade um, contact plate that I made in a gar garage. And you expose it and that, that's your photogram. Now you don't have to use twigs and, and leaves and stuff. I mean, this is pretty cool, but you can use any other object. You can just place anything on the paper and expose it to UV light and see what comes out. You gotta experiment. It's a pretty cool process, so I'm gonna get on with that. And I'll record some portions of it and I'll show you the final results. But this is uh, in case you don't have any negatives to expose or you run out of idea, so this is something that um, opens the door to endless possibilities. So while the paper is um, synthesizing and drying, I just wanna. Uh, some of you watched my video on cyanotypes, so you can refer to that video as far as equipment, as far as paper and, and synthesizer. But for you that don't want to go back and look, just quickly. So cyanotype process was invented by Sir John Herschel, who was an astronomer and scientist in 1842. Now, the first, uh, I guess, published book with cyanotypes was by Anna Atkins who was um, by many considered first photographer. She had a collection of seaweed and she would just place that, uh, basically what we're doing here, a photogram, but she would place it on synthesized paper to create silhouettes of, of, those, um, of those things. And then she would expose it to light. And for you chemists out there, the synthesizer I buy my already done, or it comes with dry ingredients. But if you want to mix your own, it's 8% potassium ferric cyanide and 20% ferric ammonium citrate and you mix it together one to one and then it creates mildly light sensitive um, mixture and you coat it on paper I use a stone hedge uh, 110 paper which is good enough for that and but for sign but for um, soul printing I use a little bit different paper that's a, that's a different story so um, sometimes what you can do is use your Revlon dryer if uh, you don't want a you know, crappy dryer, you want a good dryer. You don't want your prints to be less fashionable, they, they need good stuff. So what I recently I discovered uh, upon some reading and some testing I did that when I dry it with too much heat it creates grainy um, surface and I don't I don't like that for some reason but uh, let it dry on its own to a certain degree and then hit it with dry quite quickly it creates a smoother result now in the end you you wash the print and I'll show you how it works and then in the end after washing you uh, soak it for just a few seconds 30 seconds in a hydrogen peroxide solution so I take uh, about 10 millimeters 10 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide, 3% hydrogen peroxide, and I put in a half a liter of water, and that gives a nice contrast to these prints, like you can see behind me, a pretty, pretty nice deep blue. Now, I also read that there's a potassium diachromate that you put like six drops of that stuff in, in every solution, like two millimeter of total solution, and that's supposed to boost the contrast. I have not tried that yet. I have potassium diachromate but I did not uh, not try that yet, so I'll try it maybe for the next time to see how that works. All right, well, stay tuned, and I got maybe 10 more minutes, and the paper will dry to a certain point, and I'll hit it with a dryer, and then 
uh, after that I start uh, placing these, these uh, leaves and twigs behind me on paper to see what we can uh, what we can come up with. And I'll just take um, random stuff, random twigs. I'll just pop them on here, like so. Maybe I'll add um, something interesting. I have my other leaf, like maple, sort of maple leaf. I left it somewhere, but I have no idea what happened to that. Maybe I'll just do that, then. and I'll just do that, and see how that. Um, how it comes out. And I'll show you how that looks. Just place it in your contact frame. Place the glass over it. Put your clamps. Like this. And off it goes onto the UV box. And we'll let it cook. So I've been cooking this print for about five minutes. Now I'll just turn the thing off. And uh, uh, looks good to me. I'll show you what it looks like. It's kind of like um, like this. So I'll just remove it from the frame and see. Um, See what's there. If if the print comes out too dull after washing, then I'll just increase the exposure by a few more minutes. So this is what it looks like. So all the light green stuff will actually turn white, and um, that'll be a silhouette of your of your object. So basically, you want to wash it until all the green all the uh, yellow water uh, runs uh, runs out and it's all clear after that and print turns blue. Now it's all the sides here I think I washed it a little bit too long so what I'll do is um, next time I'll just um, I'll just go ahead and um, expose a little bit longer just for that just so it will be nice and blue all around but that looks pretty good so what I'm going to do now is um, I soak it in uh, some hydrogen peroxide solution and it will turn really really deep blue I'll show you that all right so here I got my hydrogen peroxide mixed with water I'll just pour all this stuff out and now if you really look at it the print will turn really deep blue Just let it soak here for a few seconds. And I'll just pour the water out. You can reuse that. And I'll go ahead and wash the print. Uh, for a few minutes and hang it to dry and that's pretty much it. Some people recommend washing the print very long. I don't. I wash um, I wash the silver prints or, or salt prints um, for about 15 minutes in a little bit warm water but these I don't wash um, for long. Just a few minutes, rinse them real good, hang them to dry and move on to the next. Now for my next print I'll try to be a little bit more creative uh, so I got different sort of twigs or, or leaves. So I'll peel some of those leaves out like this, and maybe I'll arrange them something like this, sort of, uh, sort of like that. And 
And what I'll do in this case, since the, the leaves themselves are pretty dense, so what I'll get is um, basically a, a silhouette of of the of the plant. So what I'll try to do is cook it for a little bit longer, so the UV light hopefully penetrates through the leaves themselves, and maybe will expose some of the inner veins onto the paper. I don't know. It may work, may not. And for added interest, uh, maybe I'll place this guy here, just just to see how that works. And um, this twig, eh, I don't know if that works really well. What I was thinking to do. Is there something like this? Peel some of these things off like that. Yeah, I guess it may work. It's just uh, whatever arrangement you want to do. Place the glass over it. It looks, looks pretty interesting. Now, again, this is all experimentation whatever you feel like is gonna work, you have a um, more artistic approach to it by all means go with it so this printer here I cooked for ugh, just roughly about 10 minutes and as I suspected some of the veins, some of the leaf veins got exposed into the, the picture now the yellow stuff will mostly wash out some of it will remain the only way to find out how it's gonna look is to actually put in a wash and, and see what comes out but I'm hoping that some of these veins will remain and it will show up in some of these um, in this photo. Uh, for the next one I'll cook it uh, slightly longer and see how that turns out. You have to understand that the leaves are pretty opaque and it's hard to expose them through but um, I see that uh, these guys, the maple leaves, uh, did it a little bit better than, than these guys and we'll see how that works. Alright, so cooking this print much longer than the other one, uh, one thing you'll notice is it's it's deeper blue than the previous one, plus um, uh, I think that looks a little bit better. So about 10 minutes was what I, what I did here. Now I hope that these leaf veins would um, remain somehow visible, but they, they all washed out. So the next print I'll do is I'll place maple leaves around and I'll cook that for let's do 15 minutes and let's see if that changes anything so I'll tone that with um, hydrogen peroxide and I'll hang it to dry and I'll move on to the next one but that's um, I think 10 minutes for, for these uh, photograms would be a good start now with negatives the nice thing is if you're using a flat negative you can actually open half of your frame and peek in now with this one you don't you can't really do that because the the twig or whatever you're exposing uh, it, will, it may shift and once once it shifts you pretty much uh, it's, it will not go back into register so this here print was uh, being exposed for about 15 minutes a little bit over that and although the initially the leaf veins showed up in the print after just quick one minute wash they simply disappear however I still like the maple leaves um, better on these prints than my twigs. I'll try, I still have those weird looking cattail twigs, so I'll try to expose those longer and see how they turned out. In the end, this is a pretty cool process and if you don't want to use uh, negatives which I think look cooler you know these, these portraits look very nice present themselves very nicely in cyanotypes you can do photograms uh, if you wish uh, there's no need for elaborate equipment I happen to have darkroom you don't need darkroom you can do it in any room you just need to have access to a hose and running water uh, and the, the chemicals which can be purchased from pretty much from anywhere. I buy mine from Bostick and Sullivan. I don't get paid by them, but I like their chemistry, uh, what 
forty-five dollars. It comes with instructions. You can do like hundred, easy hundred prints. And one thing I learned is, and one thing you you read about is you want to overexpose the image. So if you look at it, it looks pretty cool. You want to keep cooking it, and this way it will turn out nice and deep blue. So if you can see this one behind me, the fern, whatever that thing is, I didn't cook it for long enough, and parts of the print washed out, so it's not as blue. This one was cooked for about 10 minutes. It's much deeper. This one here in the wash was being cooked for about 15 minutes. Even better results. So cook it, experiment with it, write down the times, write down the results, and you'll, you'll be really happy with them. And it's a really, really cool process. No, nothing special needed. Um, if you don't have a UV box, use sunlight. Use your window, post it, put it in the window. You can make yourself a frame like that for a few dollars. Um, or you can purchase a nice uh, contact frame for a hundred bucks made out of cherry or whatever. Crazy stuff. So, I hope you enjoyed this um, short um, trip into World of Cyanotypes, uh, second edition. The first one was um, with all the details on it. Uh, you, can, you can watch that video if you wish. Um, but this one was just something I wanted to do and the process was, was really cool and educational even for me that after doing a whole box of these things you, you still learn something. You learn something every day. When it comes to photography, you, once, once you think you know everything, then you get in trouble because in photography the way I see it is, to me at least, it seems like you're entering this, this hallway with a bunch of doors. and. You open one door and it turns out there's another hallway with many many other doors and, and rooms and you explore each room and then you get out of there, you go to the main hallway and you, you enter to a different door which contains more more doors with, with different rooms and, and each room would be a different aspect of photography, whether it be composition, whether it be um, chemistry, whether it be whatever, in digital world it could be lenses, it could be lighting, it could be it could be a whole bunch of things, so you, you, you really, there, there's no point, I, I, I imagine, in, in the world of photography where you learn everything and that's it. No, you, you keep learning and in the end you, you die stupid. Not, not that bad, but you die without knowing everything. So. Uh, until next time, keep shooting film, keep doing cyanotype, salt printing, uh, keep shooting digital as well. I was doing some digital shooting today too, which which I'll be probably doing cyanotype stuff and those prints as well. Until next time, keep shooting film.